Well, tonight you're in for a treat. And to kick us off here, I'm going to start us off with the contest Toastmaster. But before that, during the intermission, somebody approached me and they said, Who are you? And why are you on stage? <laughs> so perhaps I was a bit remiss, did not follow my own Toastmaster etiquette. My name is Patrick Stevenson, and I'm a member of the South Loop Speak Freaks Club here in downtown Chicago. And tonight and tomorrow, I'll be your host for this event where we step up to leadership. And now, all the way from Extreme Toastmasters in Chicago, the man who has recognized that it is actually possible for a speech to kill an audience. <laughs> so he has made it his life's mission to prevent death by speaking and is a professional speaking coach. Distinguished Toastmaster, your contest MC, Mr. Tim Wilson.
because you never have enough screening bots. Am I right? You never have enough screening bots. Right? Yeah. Screening bots are the key Thank you, Tim. It goes messes with believe in recognition, right? Who here does not believe in recognition? I want you to stand right now. <laughs> so we have a lot of volunteer leaders in this room who, who get paid a lot. Michael, Michael said that he was the highest paid uh, Toastmaster in the world, seven digits. I know some people in the district that get paid nine digits. So, so did, he, did he get the joke? <laughs> it's all zeros, folks. It's all zeros. But we, we do give them a lot of support by clapping. What I'm going to ask is for these two individuals, I want them, I want you all to clap uh, hard and immediately after I introduce them. For the next uh, couple, ten minutes of individuals I'm going to introduce, please wait. Until I introduce everybody. But for these two, the first two people I'm going to introduce, please give them a round of applause. Best Chicago land has ever heard. <laughs> Let's give a shout out for Mr. Michael Lataro, international president. <laughs> Regional Advisor of Marketing, Past International Director, Past District Governor, Dietmar Riding Connect. <laughs> now I'm going to st uh, start naming names, so please, please do not applaud until you get my <laughs> John Moore, Lynn and Gone of Education and Training. <laughs> John Keith Chan. You get to do what I tell you to do until July 1st. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I'm going to pay for it later. <laughs> Gina, Gina Crump, Public Relations Officer. Robert Harrington. Our district secretary. Actually, I did. Uh, there was one breach of protocol. I should have introduced. We have a uh, sea of district governors from other districts that have come. Let's for these individuals. Let's give them a clap because they came from another district. Uh, I know Walter Wolf from District Eleven is here. District Eleven, Donna. Public relations officer from a what district was that? District 11, right? 11. From 11. Right? Is there anybody else from another district? Oh, I see Mr. Ron Kirchgeschner, past international director. Let's give him a look. Ron is a fellow IT guy, so we all love him. Okay, Kathy Stroh, District Treasurer. Yeah, looks like they're all working. Bob Roman was also working. Kyle Rory, past, <coughs> immediate past. <coughs> Don't clap me, I'm glad Northwest A, Division Governor, Linda Edinburgh. Central South, Division Governor, Theo Travis. Central North, Division of Honor, Cynthia Leggett. Southwest, Division of Honor, Donna Preston. North, Division of Honor, James Sanchez. South, Division of Honor, Don Williams. John Labby, Area 3 Donor. Ken Pedlanek, B13, Area Donor. Area 7 Donor, and his sofa. B17, then Dennis Johnson, which is not here. E36, Shark Lucy. M42, Cleo Scott.
Lee Jones. Let's all give them a big round. Three of us can do this great job. <laughs> and now I'll recognize everyone else not mentioned. <laughs> I first recognize all the other Toastmasters who give the dignitaries someone to order around. <laughs> the guests who we hope will give us their money. <laughs> Without you, all of this would not be possible. Please give yourself a big round of applause. <laughs> the contestants and functionaries have been briefed, and if they're anything like me, they nodded their heads, pretend to be understood, and guess they kind of figured out when the contest started. Everyone is aware of the rules of the contest, which is a really good thing, because otherwise you have to read the rules all over again, and that would be really boring. And... Are you ready to rumble? Yeah. Hey, here are the contest contestants in the order they are speaking. Contestant number one. Barry Nixon. Barry Nixon. Contestant number two, Prez Vasila. Prez Vasila. Contestant number three, Charles Brooks. Charles Brooks. Contestant number four, Felipe Valdez. Felipe Valdez. Contestant number five, Jill Morgenthaler. Jill Morgenthaler. Contestant number six, Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox. And here are the contestants in speaking order backwards. Matthew Fox, number six, Jill Morgan, Father, number five, Lydia Bellas, number four, Charles Brooks, number three, Perez Vasile, number two, Mary Mixon, number one. Mr. Sergeant Arms, will you please escort all the contestants out of the room except for our first contestant? Listen, 
it's really, really good because everything is gone. Remember that new living room set that you wanted? You got it now. No problem. <laughs> Insurance will take care of that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the stairs are gone. The stairs are gone. So not only do you get a new living room, you get a whole new upper deck as well. We can start all over again. <laughs> Yeah, and you didn't like the car anyhow, because that's totaled as well. So we can start from... Yeah, well, baby, I know, I know, but we've been together how long? I don't think we should break up over something like this. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, isn't this what love is all about? Remember those love songs, things like this? Yeah. And I built up some brownie points. Remember Valentine's Day just happened? Look how many flowers. Yeah, mm -hmm. 21 flowers. This should count. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what time are you coming home? Well, the fire department, oh yeah, things caught on fire as well, I'm sorry. <laughs> the fire department is leaving in a little bit, and um, uh, I'll, I'll pick up Johnny, no problem, I'll pick up Johnny. He doesn't have a room anyway, anymore, so he can just stay with us. Uh-huh, yeah, so as soon as you come home, come to the back entrance, because the front entrance is gone, and it's a hazardous situation going on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The lawn, yeah, that's been torn up too. Basically, we're going to get a whole new house, honey, okay? <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, you told me to be honest with you. You know I have a problem with honesty, so I just want to let you know. Yeah, I know it's at work, but I didn't want you to get home and be surprised. Okay? Love you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>
is one of the best things it has happened so far. <laughs> so, let's go shopping. Mr. Chair. One minute of silence for the judges mark the ballots. Contestant number three. Charles Brooks. You just crashed your car into your spouse's living room. Explain to your spouse why this is a good thing. You just crashed your car into your spouse's living room. Explain to your spouse why this is a good thing. Charles Brooks. Still, 
love my spouse and embrace her each and every day. Mr. Toastman. We have one minute of silence. Will the judges mark their ballots? Contestant number four, Felipe Valdez. You just crashed your car into your spouse's living room. Explain to your spouse why this is a good thing. You just crashed your car into your spouse's living room. Explain to your spouse why this is a good thing. Felipe Valdez. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Contest Master. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. President. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> so, it's kind of funny because, first of all, my spouse is in the audience. So it's like me talking to my spouse. And I have to come up with a ridiculous answer to a ridiculous question with a ridiculous situation. Oh, let me start thinking. You know, it's kind of funny. This morning, I was so worried about this contest. What question am I going to get? And I remember when I was putting on my unmentionables, it's like, oh my gosh. But then I looked down, and both of my legs were in one pant hole. So I took them off, fixed my situation, and thank you for giving me this question, because it absolutely confirmed what I was thinking. You were going to blow me away with any question that you gave me. Anyhow, so let's answer the answer. Hi, Jess. He's going to kill me after this. I know that I'm sleeping on the couch, but, well, you might notice there's a car in our living room, but this is a good thing, and here's why. We just closed on a townhouse at the end of January and moved in at the beginning of February, and I like to joke around. I like to say, for any single thing that she harps on, it's like, oh, I thought this kitchen was much bigger than our old place. I joke with her and I say, oh well, I guess we have to move now. <laughs> so Jess, sorry about this, but hey, we can get you a bigger kitchen. <laughs> Here's another funny thing. So we were going to get a wine refrigerator. And we said no, because there's not enough cabinet space. So I say, with this car in the living room, Without a functioning living room, how good is the kitchen? Because now you don't have a place to live in. Let's go move to the birds. Let's get a bigger house. Here's the thing. That's an absurd question. But here's the reality. I absolutely love my wife. And if I were to drive the car into the living room, we'll figure it out. Mr. Contest Master. Silence for the judges to mark their ballots.
contestant number five, Jill Morgenthala. You just crashed your car into your spouse's living room. Explain to your spouse why this is a good thing. You just crashed your car into your spouse's living room. Explain to your spouse why this is a good thing. Jill Morgenthal. Contestant number six, Matthew Fox. You just crashed your car into your spouse's living room. Explain to your spouse why this is a good thing. You just crashed your car into your spouse's living room. Explain to your spouse why this is a good thing. Matthew Fox.
loved Toastmasters. And those of us who love home remodeling. <laughs> I never knew how I was going to convince her to get rid of that shag carpeting. <laughs> and that wallpaper. My parents came over. It was the day after we got married. They looked at that wallpaper. And they said, congratulations, son. You're bringing back the 70s. <laughs> I looked at them and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Home remodeling is a big challenge these days. You got the economy out there, you got the challenges with everything that you want to get done, and then you have the factor of time. I just got demolition done! <laughs> now the fact that demolition is done, what are we going to do next? Well, the lighting, the lighting's not down yet. That's alright, I got my sledgehammer right here, honey, I keep it in my trunk. It's not much worse now, is it? Now we can get that chandelier that I wanted. <laughs> but don't worry, there's going to be a few things in for you, too. Now I know the car, I don't want to forget about that, but wow, the car? You're getting a Mercedes now. <laughs> I really have no choice. I mean, if I want to have my man cave, you're going to have your Mercedes, and we're going to, we're going to go on the town. I don't know how we're going to pay for it yet, <laughs> but I belong to this club called Toastmasters. In fact, I bet I can make a little bit of money speaking. I could probably make a speech out of this. What do you think? And actually, that's a great question. What do you think? How many of you think that would make a great speech? <laughs> now, what would be the first thing that comes to your mind if you crashed through into your house. Panic, epidemic. To me, ladies and gentlemen, I hope she'll forgive me. Contest master. Everyone, please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots and have them collected for the ballot counters.
Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. All right, let's get to you know our contestants just a little bit better, and please come up in the order that you spoke lining up on stage here. driving skills. <laughs> but I'm pretty confident that I'm going to reach that goal because I found Toastmasters relatively early in my life. And there's so many more meetings and contests to come, so many opportunities to grow, 
and to share. Thank you. And thank you for competing in the contest. Same question to you. South River Toastmasters 5534. What would I like to be remembered for? It's simply adding value to every individual I meet. And since becoming a, a Toastmaster many years ago, I've had that opportunity to speak into other people's lives as individuals have spoken into mine. And the whole key into life is to transfer knowledge. And it's an honor and a privilege to be able to transfer knowledge into another individual that inspires them to come out of themselves and become the purpose that they were meant to be. Because without purpose, there is nothing. People without purpose are some of the sickest people in the world. Because they do not or cannot prepare anything. They have no desire to. And when you can change that, when you can help them believe in themselves, then you have valued them. That's what leadership is all about. All state speakeasies, Club 3855. Five. By the way, the 855 is not a prime number, just in case you're wondering. Anyhow. If I were to be remembered for one thing, I think it would be to be remembered as a good listener. It's kind of funny. Mr. Brooks and I had a conversation before it was our turn to speak, and essentially I was telling him it's always interesting to hear why people join to his masters. I always hear, I want to be a better speaker. I want to be more fluent. I want to give effective evaluations. I want to be really good at speaking extemporaneously. But I always come back to that person and say, it seems like you're missing the most important element. What about the art of listening? My wife and I are about to get one year of marriage in a month and a day. I remembered our anniversary. <laughs> Matrimony is a struggle. We absolutely know that. But one thing's for sure, I will do my very best to hone my skill as an effective listener. I won't just hear you, I will do my very best to listen. And I feel like Toastmasters is a part of it. Here's a certificate, and thank you for competing in that. You said it'd be easier being at the end of the line. I don't think so. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters guests and friends, um, one day, for a lot of you who do not know me, I am... For those who are curious, what club are you I'm now? sorry. <laughs> Windy, Windy City Professional Speakers and a mentor towards With Peace Toastmasters. One day, you know, I'm a retired colonel, which can be very scary to a lot of people. One day I heard one enlisted woman ask another enlisted woman, yes, I see how far they jump. And she said, what's Colonel Morgenthaler like? She goes, oh, she's really kind and she's funny. And then I was like, okay, I'll take that. I never, never realized it. And when I came back from Iraq and my kids hadn't seen me in a year, I made some sarcastic remark one day and my son said, Mom, I forgot how funny you are. So, I think part of the reason of being a Toastmaster is helping others have that light bulb of what they can do and do better and take forward, and it's always done with respect and with humor. So, I'm blessed to be among all of you.
Thank you for your participation. And here is your speaker. All right, no pressure. <laughs> Aerostream Toastmasters, 1305801. Hopefully, the president's not going to kill me later for getting the number wrong. That's right. <laughs> There's so many other things that I would reinforce from the speakers before me, and just to add on top of that is how thankful I am to be standing on the stage today. There's a lot of challenges that I've faced over the past year and a half. No need to get into them. That's a topic for a better time. But Toastmasters brought me back from a, a very dark place. And it was something that was completely unexpected on my part. I've become reinvigorated as a speaker. I've made it to district somehow. I can't believe I'm actually standing here right now. <laughs> and the fact that I've actually met someone in Toastmasters too, which totally blew me away. So I don't want to embarrass them, but who goes to a Toastmaster meeting and you're like, oh, Tim, I'm going on a date after this. <laughs> Upside the head. I mean, what's the point? The point is, I've gotten so much out of Toastmasters after the last year, on top of the previous five years that I've been part of this, that I don't know if I'll ever be able to repay the debt. And I'm just eternally grateful. Your participation and here is your certificate. <laughs> and because you can never have too many announcements in one program, <laughs> by popular demand, we're bringing Patrick back to give you even more. <laughs> Every time I hear that Tim is going to be on the stage, I'm anxious to hear what he has to say tonight. Tonight is no different. We do have a couple things I want to remind you of. <clears throat> if you haven't checked in at the credentials desk and you plan on voting tomorrow, and I hope you do, make sure you check in right across the divider in the presidential hall. Also, the photo session is going to be right here after our keynote speech tonight. And don't forget about the resource room and the silent auction. And Within the contest or the conference tomorrow, we'll have videos of the contest, both via YouTube and DVD. Mr. Tim Bolger. Before I break, yes, thank you all. So, before I bring Tim back up to help us announce the winners, I want us all to thank Tim for the outstanding job he did tonight, keeping us entertained. Toastmaster, Mr. Tim Wilson, distinguished Toastmaster. Thank you. All right, I would now like to call up Srinivas and Michael Guitar. So we have bear with me. <laughs> I just noticed that we have a LGM from District 4, Eileen James, who is in the audience. Well, let's give her a big round of applause. <laughs> we also have a couple of more, just a couple of more. A Dick Stewart, past international director. I saw Kevin and Arthur somewhere. <laughs> now, now, our president. What an honor to get an award from the international president of those countries.
the third place winner of the District 30 Table Topics Contest, Jill Marvin Taylor. Second place winner of the District 30 Table Topics Contest, Charles Brooks. Let's take about a five minute break and we'll keep it short while we get up set up for tonight's keynote speech. <laughs> 